There we go. That's better. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our my final presentation of the day. We've also got our chat and comments and questions uh, session after this at half past two. Um, but yeah, welcome. We have made it. This is session number. Is this number four? Yeah, I think this is session number four of the day. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed watching so far. A quick shout out to Amanda Pickford, who has already got her um, book creator certification since we only did that at, when, what time did we start that? Is that half 11, maybe? Um, so yeah, very impressive. Well done. Uh, yes, yeah, so today we're going to be having a look at G Suite and uh, digital, no, we're not. Yeah, G Suite and digital tips and tricks for the oops, early years. So I'm just going to pull this to the side and I'm going to start sharing um, the presentation. So we'll just load this up. There we go. I had the wrong thing selected. That's why it was being silly. Right, share audio and we're away. There we go, much better. Okay. Well, it's loading. So, welcome today to G Suite and digital tips and tricks for the early years. So, a little bit about me. My name is Niall. I am currently the primary one two teacher in a school called Merkinch Primary School in Inverness in Scotland. Um, I was previously an ASN teacher, um, but I am now a primary one, two teacher. I have lived in Inverness for the past, is this fifth year now? Um, so I have put a picture here of where Inverness is. I know that people are watching this from all across the world. And um, so it's just to help you to know where Inverness in Scotland is. It's up at the north of Scotland. And here's some of the badges as well that I have. Now, I mentioned that I was an additional sport needs teacher because a lot of the things that we're doing um, to support the early years are things that um, we've, we would do to support learners who have an additional sport need or who require the accessibility settings um, to be turned on for them. So if you're at the accessibility settings, uh, uh, talk this morning, fantastic. Um, there will be a few repeats of, of, of wee bits. Um, and if you weren't, then, then great. Stay uh, and I hope that you enjoy today's session. Also, the sun is coming in this window, so it might go dark and light. I'm trying to adjust the, the shade there to help. So I'm just gonna check that I can hear myself. Also, the sun is coming in this window, so. Great, so you can all hear me as well. So today's session plan, so why focus on the early years? Um, then we'll have a look at the accessibility settings and how they can support our learners, some tips and tricks uh, for teaching the early years online, and then we'll have a look at some questions and comments at the end. So why focus on the early years? Well, I've been supporting the school and the Highland Council with their digital education and the kind of transfer from purely in-class learning to blended learning. And there wasn't much out there for the early years, to be honest with you. Uh, there's always an expectation that your learners can type, that your learners can already read, that your learners are fully functioning and able to use the Chromebooks that, that were provided, which are fantastic. But what happens if your learners can't type or write or use these devices yet? So I've been trying to find different ways to support my learners, luckily, I have a stage partner who is a, an amazing primary one teacher and um, she's been willing to try a lot of the things that I've been uh, asking about and and saying, oh, can we can we do this? And she's like, yeah, let's give it a try. So that's why I've really focused on the early years and I've really kind of tried to, to push and find ways to support all learners across the curriculum, um, but especially the younger ones. So, Let's get our accessibility settings turned on so that we can support these learners. So the first thing you need to do is down in the bottom right hand side, click on where the time is. There's a wee button down there. You're going to click on the settings cog. You're going to go to advanced, then down to accessibility. And then you're going to turn on these settings. Now, I am going to give you a minute and a half to either turn these settings on for yourself or to write these down. Um, again, apologies if you're at the accessibility training earlier. This will only take a minute and 18 seconds. Um, yeah, so get them on, get that turned on just now. I'll 
it, that was done really quickly, but it's just to kind of tell you what to do. So I'll say it again. So you're going to click on the time in the bottom corner, then settings, advanced, accessibility, and you're going to turn on the always on. So the quick access button will appear. Now, once you've done that, you may notice that your accessibility settings will appear down in the bottom right hand corner and you will get this little person who sit with the words accessibility written underneath them. So I'll give you 40 seconds to do that. It's quite nice to see we've got 34 people watching live just now. Um, so I hope that you're enjoying your day. Let me know if you're what you're what you're up to if you're enjoying all the other sessions what your favorite session was um and if you learn anything you pop it into the chat Okay, one second and done. Okay, so you should now all have your accessibility settings turned on. So what settings are there? There's loads of different settings. We spoke about these in accessibility training earlier on, um, but these are my four that I would say make the most difference to my learners in my class. So we've got the options such as select to speak and dictation. So these are your speech to text and your text to speech options. Um, I'll talk more about them later. Um, yeah, just turn them on, it makes a world of difference. We've also got the large mouse cursor. Now, i just double check, nope, you can't see. I've got the large mouse cursor on just now. Um, when you are uh, presenting your screen uh, in something like this, it doesn't always show up the large one and it just reverts back to the original one, which is a little bit annoying, um, but um, it does appear for some things and we'll talk about these later. And we've also got highlight mouse cursor as well, which puts a red ring around your mouse. So something that we can turn on is the screen spoken feedback. Obviously with our learners being um, early level and going into first level, some of them are not yet able to read um, and that will come when they are ready. So I'm gonna show you a quick video just now on ways that you can support your learners by using the spoken feedback and it will cover the whole screen. The first thing that you'll notice I do is I turn it on turn on the setting to only when my mouse is over something. Otherwise, it's just going to read your whole screen every, si every single time, um, which is great for some learners and others just need the under the mouse. So we'll just watch this quick video. Open, oh, tab created. Speak text under the mouse. Tick box, ticked. Read numbers is punctuation echo. Announce download notifications. Turn off sticky mode when editing text. Smart sticky mode when. So the rest of that video will um, it will start to show you how to change the languages as well. Um, if you want to watch that, pop along to the. Oops. There we go, to the training from this morning on accessibility settings. Um, that was just to show you so that you can find ways to support your learners. So what you would do would be, you would move your mouse over the words and the Chromebook would then read those words back to you. You can change the voice. As I said, um, you, the, the ones I downloaded recently were the Gaelic one, um, the Scottish Gaelic, and you can get a Scottish accent as well. I still find the clearest, uh, form of this, the text to speech is the um, US Chrome, just the, the default one that comes with your Chromebook. Um, so you can play around with them and see which ones your learners like. Nope, don't play that again. Come on, there we go. Okay, so now we can have a look at using the speech to text and text to speech option, options. So if you just give me two seconds, I'm going to share my whole screen with you instead of just this presentation. Okay, so you should now be able to see my full screen and I'm gonna open up this here. So here I have 
I'm just having a look to see if it works. Yes, here I have a just a blank Google Doc. You see, I had stuff in from earlier. And as a learner, I want to be able to uh, say what I'm thinking and get my ideas down on paper. Well, we can turn on that setting in the accessibility settings. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to click accessibility, and I'm going to hit select to speak and dictation. I'm going to hit on-screen keyboard for later as well. Um, OK, so select to speak will be the uh, highlighting the words to get them read back to you. But we're going to go for dictation to start with. So here's our dictation button. I'm going to click dictation. And when dictation is running, um, everything that I say will appear on the screen. So welcome to today's presentation. I hope that you have learned lots. Did that work? No, it did not work. Let's try that again. Oh, there we go. And you'll see that there's not much, like the grammar isn't great. It's got the ideas down, which is fantastic, but the grammar is not great. And the uh, actual dictation stopped after a second of me not speaking. So one thing that you can do is you can change the dictation that you use, especially for Google Docs. So I'm going to come down, take two new lines, and I'm going to go tools. And I'm going to come down to voice typing. Now we get the pop-up that looks like this. I'll drag it over a wee bit so it's easier to see. I can change the language um, that I am speaking in, but I am going to click the button and for as long as that button is uh, pressed for, so as long as it's I've kept it turned on, it will record what I am saying. This is a great thing when you're in lectures and when you're at university and you're wanting to get the notes down on paper. It's also great for when you are, um, if you're teaching in class and say you have a pupil who is struggling to hear everything you're saying, you could record it using the, the, the um, speech to text and then they can play that back as many times as they need to. Um, or we can get our ideas down for recounting and retelling stories. So I'm gonna press this button here. Welcome to today's presentation. Full stop. I hope that you have learned lots, exclamation point. New line. So you'll notice that I could do a lot more things there just with this tool as opposed to the dictation button. I would say the dictation button is really good for short things. So things such as searching on Google, if you have to type in your name for anything, so like a, any short field that you have to type into, um, the dictation button is great. If I'm doing the work on Google Docs um, or even uh, the book creator from earlier we spoke about, I would use their built-in um, dictation features. So you'll notice that I was able to do things like add punctuation, take new lines. Um, yeah, it added in capital letter and grammar for me appropriately. So I prefer this one for my learners. We can also go to Google and we can use other things to support our learners when they're searching. So I could use the dictation button again here. So I could just click and I could type and I could say the words whatever I'm looking for or I can press this button here and I can search by using my voice. So um, this is, has been really useful for our learners. We use this with uh, Chrome Music Lab. There's been training on that today as well already. Give that a, a wee watch because it's brilliant but that was one of the first things that I put my learners onto um, and got them to search for. So Chrome Music lab. So I'm going to show you just now what I'd expect my learners to do. So open up Google Chrome, as we've done. It would close all the, the, the screen if I uh, closed it down and opened it up. So open Google Chrome, and this is going to be their homepage. Search for Chrome Music Lab. Chrome Music Lab. And click on the first um, uh, piece of text. What would you call that? Link <laughs> that appears. So now my pupils have all been able to access the internet, have all been able to uh, work out which, uh, have all been able to access the internet, they've all been able to um, find something on an internet search, and I've not even had to be near them. I could be over helping another group, and a group are looking for something on the internet, example, Chrome Music Lab, they've done it all themselves. 
So what happens if they don't know if that's the right search result? So we've searched with our voice for Chrome Music Lab. Let's now use the uh, text to speech to read it back to us. So I'm going to highlight the description of what Chrome Music Lab is, and um, hopefully this will be what I'm looking for. What is Chrome Music Lab? Chrome Music Lab is a website that makes learning music more accessible through fun, hands-on experiments. What can it be used? You've visited this page many times. Last visit, the 21st of January, 27. Okay, good, you can hear that. Um, so that is one way that you can use the text-to-speech to support your learners. They were searching on the internet and uh, they used their voice to search and now they've used the speech to text, though the text to speech to hear what is going on. So they know that that's the right thing to click on. Chrome Music Lab, and there we go. I'm not gonna play the, with these things because I will get drawn in. The class absolutely love them. Just need to know that. Okay, so let's pop back to our presentation. Uh, stop sharing the screen. Share a tab instead. There we go. Just waiting for that to load up. Okay, so we searched using our voice. Um, we can also use the Chelsea Market font to support our learners as well. Um, I like the Chelsea Market font. It's the dyslexia friendly font. Um, I like it because it has the rounded A. Uh, something that really, really grinds my gears is the amount of places that will use the kind of uh, hooked top A. I don't know what they're called. Um, as like the, the 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 A that they would use. But my learners haven't learned that as the, the as an A. So they would. Why would they think? to be able to read that. Um, so Chelsea Market uses the rounded ad that we teach in school, which is brilliant. It also supports learners who have an indication of dyslexia. Um, and because the letters are weighted towards the bottom, um, it's, it helps them to be able to read that. These are some of the fonts that I would recommend for the early years. So I really like using Mali. It's the one that I've been using for this presentation. I used to use Chelsea Market all the time, the one that we've just spoken about. Um, both are brilliant. Comforta is great as well. Uh, the letters are a wee bit kind of more robotic, but yeah, I really like these. And Patrick Hand as well. So these are all the names of the, the fonts that I would recommend. Again, with all of them, they're not perfect though. Um, so for example, Comforta has got the stopped F. It doesn't hook around around the bottom. And the same for Chelsea Market doesn't have the flick for the T. Patrick Hands doesn't have the flick for the T or the right K that I would use in class. None of them are perfect. It's the same when using numbers as well. They'll have different looking fours, like the four that, or that looks like that. And then they've got the four that looks like that. Um, yeah, none of them are perfect. And unfortunately, you cannot upload a font to G Suite or Google Workspaces currently. Um, hopefully in the future that will become a thing. The, but Google does have loads of different fonts. So go and have a look, pick your own. If you find a better one, let me know. Um, but I've tried to install it, the Twinkle font, but it, it, they, they just don't work. Oh, I can see we've got a comment. Amanda, well done. My wee class love Google Chrome Music Lab too. I might love it a wee bit too much. <laughs> me too. <laughs> uh, I've spent way too long. It, it did say uh, you visited this page many times. So <laughs> I also enjoy it too. So thank you very much. I, I wonder if I can pop that up. I can. Hey, now everyone can see. Good job. Thank you very much for sharing. Okay. So read and write. Read and write is an excellent application uh, extension that you can add sorry it's an extension that you can add to google chrome we have just recently got it in the highland council you'll see that when i took the screenshot i wasn't using my highland council login so i have the 30-day free trial um but it's got loads of things so i've written out what all of the things that it, it can do are so starting from the left we have prediction We've, it will predict the words for you. It's got a dictionary, a picture dictionary as well. It can read the whatever's on the screen to you. It can pause and stop. It's got a screenshot reader, so it will screenshot a part of the screen and it will read to you the words that are there. We've got audio maker where it will export as MP3, web search, screen mask, so that'll cover all the screen apart from what you're wanting to read, talk and type, translator, 
We've got highlight for yellow, green, blue, and pink. We can clear the highlight and we can practice reading aloud. Uh, it does so many things and I am so excited to actually get into it and start using it. Um, yeah, I, I always thought that this was a penguin reading and after actually making this slide, I realized that it is an adult with a child in front of them. <laughs> I always thought it was a penguin. Don't know why. <laughs> so yeah, Read and Write is an excellent um, extension that you can get. The Our council has just recently bought it for everyone. So that's currently being rolled out, I believe. Um, yeah, go and check it out. You can use the accessibility settings in Google Slides to support your learners, especially the younger ones, whilst they are learning to read. So I've got a quick video here. The main kind of point is turning on the captions and um, what a, a kind of game that you could play would be say a word and the word will appear at the bottom and you get your, your students to try to work at all the sounds that are in that word. So for example, excuse me, if I said the word star, um, the word star would appear at the bottom. You could get your learners to point out that there's s, t, a, and er. Um, and so they're making that connection to the words that we're saying are the words uh, that we read every day. And they're made up of the sounds that we're learning about. So here is a very quick video for you. Let's have a look at the Google Slides presentation accessibility settings. So if I move my mouse down to the bottom right, I can go back a slide, I can play, the play all the slides, I can go forward a slide or jump to a different slide by number, I can open up the question and answer part of the presentation tool, I can look at the pre presenter notes, I can turn on the laser pointer and move that around the screen, I can also turn on captions as well. So I'll click the drop down arrow first and you can choose to have your captions at the top or the bottom and you can choose the size. I'm going for extra large. We can then turn on captions by pressing the CC and now you'll notice that I have captions that appear at the bottom of my Google Slides. These captions are great for learners who are learning to read as they are hearing. Um, similarly, as you would have a learner listen to an audiobook and read the words at the same time, they can do this with Google Slides. You can also support learners who have English as an additional language as they're able to read the words as they hear them. It also helps anyone with a visual and hearing impairment and anyone who is further back from the speaker, maybe at the back of the room, who's unable to hear what they're saying, but they can read the smart board. So they can see the words um, and the presentation as it is being spoken. So we're gonna turn off captions now. We can look at the keyboard shortcuts. We can increase and decrease the full size, the full screen of the presentation. We can open speaker notes, auto advance when played, so that'll link to the play button back there, and we can download the presentation and we can exit as well. Okay, sorry, I just have to do that every time. Um, thank goodness that Amanda is here keeping me right. Uh, so I'll just pop that up. So it's a double story A versus a single story A. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> that's, my, that's my trouble. Uh, we've also got, I'm glad, uh, Amanda's glad that I'm, I'm focusing on the early years. Thank you. And uh, the wee ones are amazing and are more than able to learn to use technology. Absolutely. I'm loving all these comments that are coming in. Keep them coming in. So let's have a wee look next at, come on, there we go. Using Screencastify and Moat. These have been excellent in my class. So I've been using Screencastify and Moat to support my learners in Google Classroom. Screencastify, I'll use to record uh, the, the screen that I'm using. Um, so if I am doing a, a lesson and I'll pop it up on YouTube, um, I'll record the, the Google Slides and I'll talk them through the lesson. I'll also use, we'll talk about it later, but I also use um, slides timer. So you see that I've always got this, the time up at the top of my Google Slides. It keeps me right, keeps the learners right, and it also just puts numbers out there. Um, the, the more print that we have available to our learners, the, the better. So 
yeah, it's, yeah, I'll talk about slides timer later. But Screencastify is great for giving instructions, so recording what you want the, the students to do before they do the work, and to give feedback as well. Um, it adds that personal touch. All you do using Screencastify, I think Pam, is it Pam's gonna talk about it today? Um, all you're gonna do is record your video and then get the link, copy the link and stick it in the comments and now the children can see and watch the video um, and appreciate uh, the work that you actually uh, are providing for them instead of just having the work there um, and not understanding what needs to come next. The same can be done with Moat as well. So Moat is brilliant because Whereas Screencastify records the video, Moat is just the voice. So I've been using this for leaving quick and snappy uh, voice comments on my uh, Google Classroom. I've also used it for instructions as well. And it's great because Moat can translate the, the, the words that you're saying. So it will uh, give you a script of what's been said in English, the, the language that you're recording it in, English for me. And then you can translate that script to another language. So you're sporting learners and families who have English as an additional language. So here's an example of how I would use uh, Screencastify. So here I've recorded a video of me using, uh, completing the work that my students would be doing. And all I would then do is click on here, which is click, uh, sorry, copy shareable link. I just copy that button and then I paste that link into my learner's work or their feedback for Google Classroom. The same on Moat, get the extension, record a really quick Moat, uh, which is a voice note. And then that will automatically copy for you and then paste it in for, the, for my learners. So having a look at assessment, here's a few ideas of what I've been doing in my classroom. This is not the be all and end all. I was shown some amazing things using Google Slides recently. No, this is Google Slides, Google Sheets, um, where they were taking a, um, like a color and making it, an, uh, a coloring in sheet and making it color by numbers. So as you typed in the right answers in the cells, the coloring in sheet colored itself in, <coughs> excuse me. So yeah, this is not the be all and end all, but here's a few ideas for how you can support your learners using G Suite and the Google products. So here we have a click and drag. You just click them and organize them into the right uh, uh, spaces. We've got a what number comes next. You'll see that I've used Chelsea Market. All, of, all that I ask the children to do is fill in the final number. Here we have another click and drag. So we are, uh, what are we doing? We're filling out our number lines here. So it's just a quick GIF to show you. This was recorded using Screencastify. Here we have, now annoyingly, for copyright reasons, I've had to take out the icons and just kind of block over them. Uh, sorry about that. I did have icons. I got these from, um, da, da, da. what's it called? Let's find out. Hold on, two seconds. Let's find out for you. Just while this loads, come on. There we go. Um, so if you pop along to on your Google Slides, add-ons. Oh my goodness, it's going slow. Add-ons, and then you can get flat icons, which is a brilliant thing. Um, and it just allows you to put in icons. Unfortunately, I'm not able to share these with you today um, because I don't own them for copyright reasons, but flat icon is brilliant for adding in icons into your work for your pupils. Noun project as well, Amanda. Yep, noun project's great as well. Um, does the exact same thing. It's just icons for you to use with your learners. So let's load this back up. So all I was wanting my pupils to do here was to fill in the missing sound. I also recorded that on Screencastify and played that game with them at the same time. Oh, sorry, didn't block these ones out, sorry. Um, flat icons is good, some are free if you credit the creator, absolutely. Hi, Juan. Um, so here we've got a way to take the uh, just a worksheet and make it into a digital worksheet. So I really quickly created this here. What letter is missing? I've not put in any pictures. I've not put any space. I've not put in any kind of uh, lines for anyone to um, answer because I'm going to do that digitally on Google Slides. So here's my picture. I've gone onto my Google Drive app on my phone down here and I've clicked scan. I then um, scanned in this picture and I made it the background on my Google Slides. I then went to file and I changed the Google Slides dimensions to 21 centimeters, oh, sorry, 
21 centimeters by 29.7 centimeters. These are the dimensions of A4 paper, okay? What I then did was I went to flat icon for the add-ons and I added in these images. Thank you, flat icon. And I then added in four text boxes for my pupils to answer their work from. I use this for um, this kind of work here. I also use it for worksheets from Twinkle as well. So Twinkle, you'll download the PDF, change the PDF to an image. I prefer PNG because it's better quality than JPEG. Change it to PNG image, then um, upload that PNG image as the background change your dimensions to 21 by 29.7, add in some answer boxes for your pupils, and bam, you have an interactive uh, worksheet. So here's just a quick video showing you how to do that. So file, page setup, custom, change it to 21 by 29.7 centimeters, add in your background image, Choose image. Okay, and then add in the text boxes. Okay. Next up, we have talking about we're talking about Moat again. So Moat has recently added in a thing where you can add in audio clips to your uh, Google Slides. So you'll see up beside present, I have a big M there. When I click on that M, I get the option to start to record my voice note. So I will press this button and then to record, press it again to stop. Here it is here. And then this button here will appear. I can now listen to that audio as a learner. It could be for instructions. It could be for talking about other ways to approach something. So for example, on your slide number one, you may um, have one way to do for whatever, two times five equals 10. Uh, Google slide number two is the same question, but you ask your pupils to find a different way to show you that uh, two times five equals 10, okay? Um, and you can use the audio to support your learners with this. Hello everyone, this is just a practice moat to let you see what uh, happens when you record a moat note um, for your learners on Google Slides, <clears throat> okay? We can add in slides timers as well. So. All you do is you get the extension. You'll see on the left-hand side, it's just an extension. And the extension actually does nothing. There's no options in the extension. Um, but it works in the background alongside your Google Slides. So when you want a countdown, you're going to do two triangle brackets left. You're going to put in your time and then minus. And then you're going to close your two triangle brackets. I've had to put spaces in the top one for each of these so that it doesn't work. Um, it doesn't start counting down. Um, excuse me. We've also got counting up, and we also have the current time. It will take the current time from your computer. Slides timer is great. I like using it for 10 second countdowns uh, with my people. So if they're needing 10 seconds of thinking time, it's a visual for them and for me as well. We've also got Kahoot here. I was going to show you a video, but uh, I think we'll run out of time. This video just shows you what it's like to use Kahoot um, to engage your learners in something a bit different. We've used Kahoot for quizzes. We've also used them for our Google Meets as well, um, where we will share the code. And as a Google Meet, I'll post the question up and on their phone or on their Chromebook on a different tab, they will have to answer the question. Here's some ideas of things that we've done during our Google Meets. So we have three Meets a week. We have Monday, uh, Wednesday, and Friday. We have at the start of our meet, we ask our learners to bring something with them, to show us something that is the shortest thing you can find. Another example was something that starts with the g sound. We've got show us something that starts with i as well. Um, we've also done two scavenger hunts as well. So you'll find that the two GIFs on the bottom of this that are moving, <clears throat> excuse me, um, find something yellow, find something orange. And the scavenger hunts are done in real time, but we share the GIFs with the parents before the scavenger hunt, just so that people can be prepared because, uh, yeah, there's nothing worse than being put on the spot, I guess. <laughs> um, and your child is asking for something that's made of wood quickly. Ah, uh, yeah, so we we enjoy doing these with our Google Meets. We will then read them a story as well. I'll talk about reading stories in just a minute. And then we give them the chance to tell us something as well. 
So when you're in your Google Meet, similarly to as I'm doing just now, I will drag one side of my screen, one like tab to the right and then one to the left. So I tend to put my Meet or today's uh, live stream on the right and then I'll put the presentation on the left and anything else that I need on the left. And it just means I can see what's going on um, for my learners on the right and on the left um, is all the presentation stuff that's been shared with them. Epic reading is epic. It's amazing. I said I would talk about reading books uh, as well. So when you're, if you're wanting to do any online reading, Epic is fantastic. You can get logins for your students. It links to Google Classroom and you can see how long your students have been reading for. You can assign books to them. It's brilliant. Um, and some of the things that they've got copyright, when you open up any book, you get copyright information. Some of the stories have a quiz as well. You can favorite books. You can assign your books to your students, you can hide books, and you can share them out with your students too. <coughs> so I've been talking a lot this morning. Um, you can also read aloud. The books will read aloud to you as well, some of them. Um, and it highlights the words that we're reading, which is fantastic. Now, something to note. If I am wrong, please, someone please tell me um, and, get it, and I'll get it fixed. Um, but as of the 24th of April, 2020, um, Epic have put out uh, this, this document that says that you they do not give you permission to record their stories. That's absolutely fine. But they allow you to live stream their stories and to read aloud with your class. So what we'll do is we will have the book on the left, the meet on the right, and we will share the screen um, of the story with our learners and so that our learners can read along as as, as we go. Um, yes, if that's changed, let me know. But that's kind of the copyright stance that Epic was taking last lockdown. Um, if this video is still knocking around in a couple of years, uh, that probably will have changed by then. But as it stands, I can't find anything to say that they've changed it. So I think at the moment, you are able to live stream yourself reading to your students. Now, what we did for our um, we did a reading challenge, a kind of a, a full day of reading as a festival. And our teachers all read one story and live streamed that story to our whole school. And it went went viral, went up all across Highland, all across Scotland, all across Britain. We had people watching our live stream. Um, and the way that we did it was we used Epic Reading to live stream our stories. So yeah, that's one thing you can do. You can also use Edpuzzle. Now my children really like this in my class um, because we use Edpuzzle, I'll record a video and for the when you would normally do thinking time, I just pause the video and I add in a question. So I can add in captions as well so the students can read, but I'll ask them. So this, for example, is kind of a double type game. What numbers are the same? 10 and 10. I wonder which numbers are the same. They would click on the number 10 and then submit. And then the video will, video will play. I'm presuming that the answers are always right when I say it. And uh, it was my girlfriend called me Dora the Explorer because uh, when I'm recording the videos, I always say uh, like, which numbers are the same? Wait a couple of seconds, go, amazing, well done, that's right. I'm just presuming that they're correct every time. Um, so yeah, Edpuzzle is fantastic and it links to Google Classroom as well so you can see their scores. Like I said, Chrome Music Lab is great. It's a great introduction to practicing the mouse skills and getting used to using the Chromebooks. Um, and it's just good fun and playing around with music and sounds. So give Chrome Music Lab a try. We have a little mini hack for you here. Obviously, Chromebooks don't have a lot of memory and um, most of them don't have access to the full app store. Well, if you press this button here along the top of your Chromebook, it will make your Chromebook go full screen and it will hide the top bar from your Google Chrome, kind of where the URL and the Omnibox is and all your tabs, it will hide that. Um, and it means that your learners have less chance of closing down any websites that you have open. So for example, I was finding, I'd open up a website and I'd spend my whole time reloading that website up um, because my learners were accidentally pressing on the red X. Well, this still allows them to press the red X, but it's not there and it's not a, a noticeable, noticeable button for them to press. So this button will make it look like your Chromebook has an app running instead of the, the web browser. Teach a Monster to Read is another great website and application. The app costs money, but every once in a while they'll make it free. So just wait until it's free and get the app. But the web version is always free um, and they're exactly the same thing. You 
start on doing sat pin and move all the way up through MDGOC and everything. Um, you then go on to reading words and reading full passages as well. So it starts right at the beginning and goes all the way up through reading. So give teacher monster to read uh, a shot. You can do it for the full class or just individuals and you can get, you'll get feedback as well um, on how your learners are doing. Now, this is something that I discovered last week. I was playing around and I used these three apps. So it's Chatterpix. Uh, it's called ChatterKid on Android. Um, Motion Portrait and SpeakPick. There's bound to be more that are out there. Um, but what I did was I downloaded a picture of my Bitmoji and I got my Bitmoji to talk. Whoa, did I just manage to get my Bitmoji to talk? So what you do for these uh, videos is you just take a still picture and it makes it move. You record a bit of sound, you point out where the mouth and the eyes are and it quite creepily moves um, and it turns it into a video for you, which is great. So you could use this for Bitmojis. I've used it for monster trucks in my class. I got the monster trucks to speak. That worked out really well, actually. Um, you can use it for, I've seen people do it for glue sticks, for anything. So yeah, chatter picks or chatter kid. Um, give that a try. That's kind of the kid, the child friendly version. And motion portrait and speak pick are, are good kind of things. I used motion portrait for this. So let's, nope. Come on. So, a few ideas of how you can use technology in your class. We've only got about three minutes left. So, I thought I, let's have a look at how we can use tech in the class. So, I have created a wee game um, for my learners. It's They call it the crazy chicken game. Here's just a tweet of it. Um, I'm going to, how do I just change the tab? Oh, it's fine. I don't need to show you. If you want to see it, it's on Twitter. Um, you can look for that tweet from Merkins Primary School, which is the school I'm at. It's just a sat pin game where the children control the chicken and try to collect all the sat pin letters. We've used the, our uh, phonics cards here and we've put a sphero in the middle of the room. And whenever I drive the sphero to a sound, the children have to make that sound. So if we drive to eh, 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 the learners will all say eh. I'll then let my learners have a shot and the rest of the class has to say that sound. I've used blue screen as well in class. So here's, it's just a blue, uh, it's kind of like felt that I got. Um, I couldn't use green because our school colors are green. Uh, so I couldn't use a green screen, had to use a blue screen. And I got an app uh, uh, that works with the blue screen and it allowed our learners to take themselves out of school and put themselves somewhere else. So here's fireworks. Um, I've done them on the farm, at the beach, loads of different things. Here we're creating uh, places to go for our Sphero. So we're creating um, kind of routes for them to, to drive around, developing that fine motor and uh, supporting the use of technology in the class. We used uh, sweeties for this one. They got to eat the sweeties afterwards and Lego here. And lastly, here is Chrome Music Lab. And I will pop it up on Twitter, but if you'd like to have a look, I've made a list of, I think there's about 70 odd uh, applications that are there. Um, and it's kind of my recommendations for what to use. There's different, there's kind of different levels. So if they're an app, a website, or if they're an extension and how they can support your learners. Um, I keep updating it. I've not updated it in a while, so I've got a few more to add. But yeah, I'll pop that up on Twitter for anyone to have a wee look at. In fact, can I copy the link? Copy link. Let's pop, pop it in the comments for everyone. There you go. So you should now be able to view that if you want. Okay, before we go, I would love to get your feedback on how today went and what you will remember from today. So if you could pop on to menti.com and type in the code 30238385, that would be amazing. Um, and I'm just looking for one thing that you're going to take away from today's session um, into, into class. So that is menti30238385. I'm just going to load it up here just now so you can see the, the results. So if you give me two seconds.
Okay, we've got a few things coming in now. So things like apps, slides, applications list. Yeah, the applications list is great. I'll pop it up on Twitter again for anyone who's needing it. Um, we've got ideas and moat as well. Worksheets and slides. Yep, that's been a good one. That's, that's so hard to show people as well because copywriting, other people's uh, content, can't really use kind of twinkle stuff. Um, again, not got permission. So I use it a lot, <laughs> but I just couldn't show you. Um, so yeah, just converting all your worksheets just from a PDF to uh, an image and uploading that as the background is fantastic. Thanks, Lauren. Thank you so much. It was, that was a great session. Thank you very much. Okay, so that's the end of the presentation. If you want to add in anything, then please do to the Menti. Um, and oh, we've got more things, fonts, assessments, text reader, confidence to try. Oh, I like these things. Good job. Um, yeah, thank you very much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, I'll knock about here for another minute or so. Thanks, Amanda. Same brilliant session. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Cheers.